First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters, and thanks for joining me in the field. Today I want to talk to you about Civil War shelter halves, and more specifically, all the different ways you can actually set them up. Soldiers were very creative during the Civil War to adjust their shelter needs to their environment or what they needed at the time or what materials were readily available. Just about every tent example, setup example I'm going to show you can be found in this book right here. We've talked about it on the channel before. It's a great resource for you if you're interested in learning more about the shelter half. But I don't want you to feel like you have to be limited in your impression by having all the identical rows of canvas tents in camp. Uh, soldiers set up their tents in a number of different ways, some making many cabins out of them and some just trying to get some shade like you see in this single shelter half configuration that you have right here. Each soldier in the Civil War would be issued one half of a tent and this is uh, a great way to make one just based on what you have in your knapsack. For materials, uh, all I used were a couple of wooden uprights. Here in the Northwest we have a lot of hazel and it makes a, a great uh, resource for making all your different tent configurations. These ones are about uh, chest height on mine and depending on how much shade or maybe how many people you want to fit into your shelter half will determine uh, how big your uprights are. So this, even this very simple configuration is infinitely adjustable to your needs. Uh, for spikes, uh, to go around go into the buttonhole of our shelter half here. Uh, I'm just using oh I think these are like uh, two and a quarter inch maybe two and a half inch uh, cut nails that you can get from uh, Tremont Nail Company. I'll have a link down in the description if you want to get your own. Uh, cut nails would have been a lot more common and easier for soldiers to acquire than a lot of the round bar you would see if you're making uh, say a wall tent set up or a big tent fly. So uh, you can always keep a couple of nails in your knapsack. They come in handy for all sorts of different uh, scenarios that you might need them for. And then I just have the tent stakes I made in the field. We have a video on how to make uh, wooden tent stakes and uh, some string that you should also have in your knapsack. So pretty much aside from the uh, wood that you find in the field, uh, just keep some nails handy and these will uh, help you build all the upcoming tents in this series and uh, your tent stakes that you make and a little bit of twine which is always handy for a soldier to carry. So we are going to change setups and we'll meet right back. Now when you and a buddy at the end of the long day's march come together you button your individual shelter halves into one tent. And this is typically what we think of when we think of a Civil War soldier. You have the complete uh, little mini A tent, the dog tent, uh, assembled here. Now, uh, many soldiers, this will be their whole tent. One person uh, for this one tent. They can keep all their kit and whatever else they need for reenacting for that weekend or that event. But uh, it was very common for up to three soldiers to be sharing a single dog tent. And... For this setup, you would have uh, two halves, you'd have four wooden stakes, you would have two forked uprights to take a ridge pole, and sometimes it might be handy to have a fifth stake going to um, a guide line on the front. But a lot of the times at, at events, a uh, wind will come up and will take down uh, just rows and rows of dog tents. And one, one thing that I teach our soldiers that sleep in a dog tent is just take some twine. At our, at our events, the uh, company streets are laid out with thousands of feet of baling twine. And so I always tell uh, our privates to uh, cut some and round, you know, round it up and then keep it in their pocket or in their knapsack. And then you can use that twine. I'm just using uh, white cotton because uh, it should show up better on the camera. And all you have to do is lash your ridge pole to your upright. The biggest culprit I have found with a, uh, tent, a tent going down is that when the wind moves, so that the tent is supported in all four corners, it's nice and taut, but when the wind moves it'll lift it and it'll allow the ridge pole to roll. So if all you do is take some string and you don't 
I mean, if you can just barely tie your shoes, you can do this. And you just go to town. If you don't know what you're doing, just make sure you wrap all the pieces of the wood nice and tight. And make sure you leave a couple of tails, go around. And there's good videos on how to do proper lashings. You can learn from and do it right. But this, just a simple lash on your ridge pole will save you a lot of late night misery when you wake up with your tent on top of you. Now, as I said earlier, these would be housing typically three soldiers at the end of a day. And one question you probably ask yourself is, okay, so you have three soldiers, uh, maybe their rifles are stacked out in the street. Where do they put all of their gear? So I'm going to show you a Civil War hack to give you a little bit more room, a little more protection from the weather, and a little more privacy. Stay with us. So what you see here is if you have two or more troops uh, sharing a dog tent, you can use one of your gum blankets to essentially make an addition to your dog tent. And this would be, give you plenty of room for your knapsack or a couple of your fellow reenactors knapsacks. And you can keep those handy. A lot of soldiers would use their knapsacks uh, sometimes for a pillow also. And if you had three soldiers, that means you're going to have a extra shelter half. And you can, instead of just using a gum blanket, because maybe you need this for the floor of your tent, if you have a third uh, partner with you in your tent, you can actually use the third uh, shelter half to either make a straight wall or you can do like this bell design and you can just tie it up on your ridge and you could pull, depending on how much rake you needed, you could have another stake tied out here to your gum blanket uh, or you could tie it to the corners of the tent and have a, a flat back. So you uh, maybe get a little more shade, a little less wind, might keep you drier if it rained at your event or you would just have some more storage in your tent. Now, another thing that you can do uh, to increase the storage capacity or maybe just the room and comfort of your dog tent and it is also very handy is to uh, cut your ridge pole really long so this example right here is just big enough for the tent it's just what I need but if you added say just another foot then you would have a place to uh, hang wet clothes to hang your uh, accoutrements uh, maybe hang a lantern if you if you have one um, and then in the morning, you wake up, you pull out your blankets, you throw them on your uh, dog tent, and you let them dry out. But this is just sort of still the beginning. We are going to show you some other ways to configure your dog tent. Stay with us. Okay, so this is still the same uh, two-piece shelter half dog tent setup. And the only thing that we did different was add two uprights to provide a lot more open space. You, you essentially... If, um, if it was just you or maybe uh, a bunkmate, uh, you could easily sleep over here and have this as essentially like a Civil War soldier parlor uh, to play games, take care of paperwork, clean your weapons. And the only thing that we add are a couple of roughly three foot uprights, again with the same uh, two inch cut nail that you saw in our very first uh, tent configuration. And then you can also, if you needed more shade or more privacy, this distance here is the, it would be, you could hang a third dog tent, or you could, or a, a third shelter half, or you could hang uh, an extra gum blanket if you had one to get more privacy. And you can do it on any of these sides to kind of escape the elements. And this is not only, uh, documented in the uh, Civil War Shelter Half book, but Wilbur Fisk, uh, in his uh, journal Hard Marching Every Day, actually talks about the first time he saw this. Uh, uh, there was another uh, unit on a cold night, and they were all around these big fires, and the soldiers would set these up. And this is actually a really clever idea, because if this part is facing your company street, going this way, then this acts as a giant reflector. So any heat that might be going on out here or over here is going to hover and circulate inside your tent, giving you a relatively nice uh, sleeping environment given the open nature and lightweight nature of your dog tents. So we are going to keep going and showing you creative original Civil War tent designs and setups. We'll be right back.
Once again, we have another option uh, that's fairly similar to our last one. Again, just using one complete dog tent. This configuration you see here with uh, the low walls, uh, they're cut uh, just below knee length. Uh, you can make them as high or as low as you want. And this is sort of a more of a, a summertime configuration. This one gives you all the shade. It also increases your uh, surface sleeping and storage area while allowing all that ventilation. So whatever sort of summer breeze you might get, it's not going to be kept out of the tent. So you can stay cool in the shade in the summer. And uh, Captain Whitehall and I just figured with this configura configuration, you can easily sleep uh, five people uh, with this sort of mini wall tent design. So now we are going to show you uh, some bigger versions of things that you can do with dog tents. Stay with us while we get set up. Welcome back. We tried to save the biggest and the best for last. Uh, what you see here is what we often call a shebang dominium. Now, you have many bu buttonholes on each shelter half. And you can actually attach complete sets to other complete sets to make a, a tent or a structure as long as you have canvas. So this one, we have two complete dog tents assembled end for end. Uh, the skipper and I went and cut down a tree about maybe 14, 16 feet long uh, to serve as, as a bigger ridge pole to support everything. We added a, another low support uh, to, to raise the tent off the ground. You could easily fit many soldiers comfortably in here. You, you, it's comfortable to sit up in throughout the tent. You have plenty of room for uh, any gear you might have. And uh, like I talked about earlier, if you extend your ridge pole, then you have a pla place to hang uh, canteens and your leathers out of the way and within quick uh, access. So the ideas here are infinite. The soldiers would take the, this basic principle and make uh, winter cabins out of it. So they could raise or lower the sides based on the materials that they had. They would uh, put log walls that they would uh, pack with mud. You would all, oftentimes have a, a barrel chimney somewhere on the back or a mud chimney. So when you look at your shelter half that's issue, uh, see it as an opportunity for creativity and uses. Uh, there are, these are all documented ways to set up your canvas and there are many more uh, other ways and ideas you'll find in period photographs. You'll also find in uh, soldier diaries and memoirs of their term of service during the Civil War. This is a great way to sort of bond with your company. It's big, you're going to trap more warmth in here. You'll have more time to, to spend sharing stories. This will be a great impression. And since it's also historically accurate, it'll make your unit really stand out from all the uh, identical dog tent setups that you so often see at reenactments. You just see a sea of canvas in perfect straight rows, when in fact, when soldiers often bivouacked, they would be as creative as they possibly could. So let us know uh, if you plan on using some of these ideas. Let us know if there's uh, ideas that we might have missed that you uh, think people should know about. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and we'll see you next time.